Hi, this is Roger, and once again, this is another video on fitness, health, and nutrition. I've been getting really angry over the last couple days because as I've been going around town, I've been seeing these signs, these billboards. They've been on bus uh, shelters. I've seen them other places. I've seen them online. Here they are. I'm going to show you a couple of shots of them. What they are is um, a giant poster, I guess, and it says, Help Prevent Colorectal Cancer. And it doesn't say that drinking milk prevents colorectal cancer. It just has this giant glass of milk. So you're supposed to say, help prevent colorectal cancer. And then you look at this giant glass of milk and you're like, oh. The implication being, of course, that drinking milk helps. Uh, prevent colorectal cancer. And I was angry. You see, I'm a vegan. Anytime anybody makes a claim for an animal product of any sort, I'm like, really? Is there scientific evidence to back that up? Um, the, the, the billboard suggests the connection, but doesn't actually say, and I thought they're really being clever as to position milk as this really healthy food when the science doesn't back it up. And I was wrong. It turns out the science does back it up. There is some preventative benefit to the consumption of milk and some forms of cancer, including colorectal cancer. But just saying that isn't the whole story. It looks like the milk people and the Colorectal Cancer Association are um, hooking up, um, working together. I mean, it's great if people are drinking a whole food. Milk is a whole food. Um, it's not a processed product. Certainly milk is better than pop and a lot of other things out there to drink, including alcohol. But just sort of saying milk prevents colorectal cancer isn't telling the whole story and it's not the best way to prevent colorectal cancer. And that is what I'm going to jump on. When you go to the website, colorectalcancer.ca, it has a list of things you can do to prevent colorectal cancer. Um, and all of them do have some scientific basis to it, so the website is good. I'll put the link just below the video so you can have a look at it. Number one thing they are saying, and it turns out is the number one thing, the research bears it out. Number one thing to prevent colorectal cancer is a diet rich in fruit and veggies. Yes, yes. I call this, well, I don't have to call this, anyone should know, a natural diet rich in things that grow out of the ground, including fruits and vegetables, is your number one tool for preventing colorectal cancer, and it turns out, all cancers. Number two, a diet rich in, wait for it, grains and legumes. Grains and legumes are um, nutrient-rich, protein-rich food. Include those as your diet, the bulk of your diet right after fruits and vegetables, and you will be in a low risk category for just about every cancer. What can I say? Then it lists milk as number three, and it says that there are some studies that show that uh, consumption of milk is linked with a lower risk of cancer. And it is true, there is some protective advantage apparently to consuming milk with cancer. It's not the number one thing though. Um, even their own website listed as a number three thing. I put it a little far, further down because there's some other more important things, including the thing they list as number four. Avoid red and processed meat. This is huge. Um, it's estimated that about 25% of your risk of cancer is associated simply, colorectal cancer is associated simply with the consumption of red meat and processed meats. Nasty, nasty, dangerous stuff. It's just not good for you. It just isn't. All right, uh, it says drink lots of water, that I'll agree with. It says avoid trans fats, absolutely. They are unnecessary, they are unnatural. Um, they, they're, they're just not found in any large quantities in a natural food and they cause cancer and obesity. Why have them, avoid them. If they're, if they're on the label, don't eat the food. Um, avoid sugar, um, avoid things with a high glycemic index. Uh, sugar is really nasty, it causes inflammation, it causes obesity, obesity puts you at risk for cancers. Um, then it talks about supplements, uh, mineral and vitamin supplements. Um, these are great. They're important if your diet is lacking uh, minerals and vitamins. But see number one and number two. If you're eating a diet that's good in lots of fruits and good in vegetables, variety of colors of vegetables, leafy grass vegetables, colored vegetables, you're not going to be lacking vitamins and minerals. So one and two are still our biggest things. Um, and in the end, it sums it up by saying that one third of your risk for colorectal cancer is diet and one third is smoking. This is for all cancers. 
One third diet, one third smoking. Milk isn't in there. So milk provides some protection for colorectal cancer, but it isn't the be all end all. And that is the important part of this video. Okay, I'm gonna go on. Something else that bothers me or things that you should be aware of is the fact that when you get your information about health, um, about nutrition, be really careful if you're getting it from someone who has something to sell you. So I went and did a little bit of research for this video. Obviously, I put the links of some of the best sites below the video so that you can look on all this cancer prevention information as well too. I went to the Siteman Cancer Center and the Siteman Cancer Institute is this, uh, I guess, high profile um, cancer fighting agency. It's under the auspices of Washington University in St. Louis. Looks like it's a really good place from what I can tell from its web presence and its reputation. And they have eight ways to prevent colon cancer. Number one way, get screened. Then it has number two, maintain a healthy weight. Number three, don't smoke. Number four, be physically active. Number five, drink moderately, if at all. Number six, limit red meat especially processed meat. Number seven, get enough calcium and vitamin D. Number eight, consider a multivitamin and foliate. Then it talks about the risks, the things that you can't avoid. But we're talking about the things you can control. Um, you can't control all cancers, but certainly a lot of them you can. Uh, what bothers me about this is the number one way to prevent cancer is getting screened. A, screened only catches, a screening only catches a cancer when it's already underway. So it's not a way to prevent cancer. It's a way to catch it if you've got cancerous or precancerous changes. But of course, some institute whose bread and butter, whose uh, financial well-being, whose raison d'etre is fighting cancer is going to want you to get screened as the number one thing. It's not going to want you to stay home and eat tons of fruit and veggies. It wants you to come into their office and get screened. And they'll charge you for it. See what's happening here, folks? It's not bad advice to get screened for cancer, but if you're getting your cancer prevention advice someplace that's going to make money for you getting screened, they're going to tell you to get screened. So you got to be really careful what's being pushed here. And that's what makes me cautious about this colorectal cancer and milk connection. Be cautious about what's being pushed. They're pushing milk. I so wish the green pepper and lettuce and turnip people would jump on this anti-cancer bandwagon because boy, have they got the best products, any fruit and vegetable product for preventing cancer. Fresh fruits and veggies. Avoid packaged foods and you're well on your way to living a healthy, healthy lifestyle. So much more to say. Oh, something else I thought of I'd share with you. Uh, I don't like the way these things are named as well, too. It shows you how wrong-headed our thinking is about health. Think of this. Suppose you wanted a society to prevent people from being cruel to animals. So you call it the Animal Cruelty Society. Doesn't work, does it? Sounds like you are encouraging animal cruelty. So you want a society that helps prevent Cancer, so you call it the Cancer Society. Not a good choice, is it? It shows us how wrong-headed our thinking is about health. Really, we should have a National Institute of Health, Health Society. So we're focusing on the disease instead of focusing on health. That is food for thought. One of the best sites for health information is the National Institute of Health because it's about that. Government of Canada also has some nice sites I'll put links below this video. Thank you for watching this long-winded rant. I think I'm going to go have some fresh fruit and veggies to uh, refresh myself. Take care and see you next video.